I would like to benefit from this opportunity to have you here in this round. I think many of uh, people sitting here, perhaps you read the UNESCO reports, and there is a lot of paper. Uh, sorry for saying that, but um, we there, there, is one, uh, there is one definition. Uh, UNESCO, UNESCO is telling us um, that we need to reshape cultural diversity to cope with globalization. That is what UNESCO is demanding for in the current reports. What is it exactly meaning? As I was saying, is we need to bring many more voices to this conversation. It's just not possible that we all see the same films produced at some coast on the American continent and that we are not aware of the many readings of facts of life and of the challenges. So this is one issue. The second issue is language and education. We live in a situation of 6,000 language groups. So learning in one's own mother tongue is a key thing. You have evidence from educational sciences that you cannot build up a certain thinking and learning capacity unless you also have access to your own cultural resources. So I think the, the task of the 10 years ahead is to connect issues of human development like education, like media, like culture in a new quality. We have to stop thinking in boxes. Do you feel that the political support for UNESCO is sufficient? Or? Well, this is a decision uh, each government uh, takes. So some governments are elected democratically, others are not. It's a 194 member states organization. And um, I think they, we, unfortunately, we have a lack of understanding why human development uh, matters. And, and this is a point where civil society needs to come in, where professionals have a real strong voice because they do the daily work. They really need this sustained uh, cooperation and it's a, it's a long term investment. Human development matters, so sometimes it's a soft issue, sometimes it's not on the top agenda of our uh, policy, but uh, concerning the German foreign policy, I think it's one of the essential pillars, isn't it? Absolutely. We are also a stern supporter of, of UNESCO uh, because education is key. Education is key for, for development, education is key for the future of all countries, and education is key to train tolerance, respect of the other. And in, in times of growing cultural diversity, this is even more important. Without a growing respect of the other, and the basis to, to be able to do this is knowledge. You have to know the other. Without respect of the other, there will be no peace. There will be no development. And uh, I think uh, this is the guarantee of, uh, of, uh, of a stable, a more, a more peaceful future. And well, human rights and, and the, um, uh, the respect of, of human rights is, is a trademark of, of, of German foreign policy. And for, for that, you have, to, you have to build more democratic, you have to build more inclusive. Uh, uh, inclusive. Uh, uh, President Habibi mentioned the, the term of justice. And uh, I would call it um, more um, inclusiveness. People have to be part of societies, everybody according to its talents uh, has, to, has to be able to contribute uh, to the societies and that's why we, for example, have, uh, have uh, um, um, signed transformation partnerships uh, with, uh, our minister did it with, with Egypt last uh, um, August last year, with uh, Tunisia September last year, uh, exactly to do this, to, to help them to overcome this period of transition. Uh, the period of transition seems to be, in some cases, uh, chaotic. Mm. But in the long run, I'm, I'm convinced, and I think we are all convinced, uh, that uh, this leads to more inclusive, to more stable societies. And we want to, to keep this open for, for many countries who uh, we hope will follow the example of, uh, of, of Tunisians and others to transform their societies into more inclusive ones. Um, as I rightly understood you, um, and also our discussion here, that the respect about cultural diversity is really one feature of a general respect on human, on essential human rights. Is it? Uh, I understood it rightly, yeah? Absolutely. Um, would you agree on that? And how helpful are, is this institutional architecture on the multilateral level 
out of a perspective of, of Mexico. Do you feel well, that? Well, Mexico, globalization and this policy, this, the, the whole policy is very important. We have invested in the, maybe in the past 20 years, a lot of money in new technology, in bringing this new technology to children. And this is what I really wanted to say, because um, in terms of, of an uh, education perspective, our education brings uh, social mobility, and this is very important. This is, uh, this is why, why people migrate, too, in search of a better development, uh, in search of a better uh, way of life. But still, in the last years, uh, Mexico has invested uh, a lot of money in education and in technology. And the thing is how to bring this technology to children and how to bring this technology, not only to children because they learn very quickly, to, uh, uh, to teachers that maybe they didn't have that technology before. So how to help these this, uh, teachers to get into, into technology and, de and, and uh, help develop new skills to the children. This is, this is a great question, and I think this is one of the things that we, we, we must focus in the next, in the next years. Because uh, it's not only technology, it's not only how to, how, how to develop uh, skills, it's how to compete, to get these, these children, when they grow up, to compete in this globalized world. And, and uh, it's a matter of... of uh, well, of, of uh, well-being, it, it, it's, it's a matter of, of getting, um, getting the best of it. So Mexica, Mexican children and all the children, they need to, to get a better life. Mm -hmm. And this is what, uh, what it's important for, uh, for us. This is why education in Mexico is one of the most important or the most important policy right now and we're the investment uh, has been uh, increased in the, in the past years. Education and hum human development matters. Um, and may I pick up it uh, again and, and have a view on Indonesia. Mr. President, you fought for civil liberties in Indonesia at a time when such liberties were anything but deeply rooted in the country's political life and perhaps also in the traditional culture. To what extent did you sometimes feel that you had also to position yourself against your own conservative cultural traditions which are there. Was it difficult, this fight for human rights and values, or was it quite easy? Uh, <clears throat> of course it is difficult. Now you have to understand the mechanism and you have to understand the problem, and based on that, you do, you give priorities, which will, has to be done first, and so on. You are not allowed to act random, reactive. You have to be able to make a program, and based on that, very pragmatic, and solved one by one. But they have one common thing, they want the right. But there I think what I have changed. They must have or be aware about their responsibility. Rights cannot be only given if you don't have responsibility. It must be balanced. And you know why they could do that? Because the United Nations itself is, is only talking about human rights, but never about human responsibility. You go into the go uh, Google and look at Interaction Council, which is headed by Helmut Schmidt. I'm a member of that council also, mm -hmm. together with Helmut Schmidt. And you put that Interaction Council, you can have it in English, in German, whatever, also in Spanish, all the language. And you put human right and human responsibility. Very detailed. And we have tried to get the attention of the United Nations on an event where they have, I think, 60 years, or how many years, United Nations, 50 years, to introduce the human responsibility values. 
Not, not successful. Trotz, Trotz. Ja, uh, Helmut Schmidt. Ja. <lacht> I'm sorry. Uh, yes. uh, but was ist Trotz? Okay. Um, uh, Thank you very much. Despite, 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 sorry, despite sorry. of Helmut Schmidt. I'm sorry. Uh, my my English is not so good as my German. <lacht> ich spreche besser Deutsch als Englisch. Um, if, that is... That is a good sign. Um, you are still awake and I think you are quite active also. You participated in our Twitter discussions and I would like to invite uh, Jana, who collected a little bit the comments and questions you've done, I think, out of this room here. Hmm? Yes, there are a lot of uh, comments discussing uh, online the panel and I just wanted to say some questions. One is for Mr. Kraft uh, because he mentioned that Europe has to do more to promote uh, multicultural integration and now... Y Jana, one may I oh. just interrupt you only oh. to say a warm welcome to, to the Foreign Mr. Minister Miller. of the Federal Republic of Germany and the General Director of Deutsche Welle. <laughs> We will come to an end, um, we hurry up, but we have some nice yes. comments from so the I audience. So I think this question works perfectly because um, they want to know what does Germany do as homework to promote more multicultural integration? Okay, it's your question. Very quickly. Or uh, the minister's uh, one. <laughs> I think I already mentioned the, uh, the German Islam conference. This was um, um, introduced uh, some five, six years ago in uh, exactly doing that, to bring in to uh, the, uh, the, um, the community of Muslim faith into uh, the, the mainstream uh, when it comes to, um, to, to the labor force, uh, when it comes to uh, all different uh, other aspects of, of life, building mosques, uh, um, religious education at school, uh, etc. We have come a long way in, uh, on, this, on this path, but uh, it's absolutely clear there are still lots of things to do. Thank you very much. And this is an encouraging hint what is happening on Twitter. You are invited to continue, participate, um, take your, assume your responsibility in shaping this conference. And I think it was a quite interesting discussion. Thank you to my interlocutors. I think, Mr. Minister, you will add some aspects on the German policy. And I, uh, I hand over to my Director General, Mr. Bettermann. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.